Welcome to the Woe Podcast about horses and horsemanship. I'm John Hare, and you've found the place where we talk horses. In 2014, I was not only new to podcasting, I was pretty green in my horsemanship. I managed to wrangle a press pass to the Horseman's Reunion in Paso Robles, California. It was a colt starting demonstration with 10 trainers from across the United States and one from Argentina. Among the lariats, whips, and flags walked one man, Oscar Scarpati, who entered the round pen plainly dressed and barefoot. Over the next few days, I marveled at what he was able to accomplish with his colt using patience and a special kind of horsemanship. Recently, when my friend Florence mentioned that Cristobal, Oscar's son, would be in the United States very shortly, I wanted to learn more. Cristobal plans on holding clinics, private lessons, and demonstrations wherever he can find an audience. One of his first clinics is in nearby Tehachapi, the first weekend in June. I contacted the organizer, Amber McGee, to learn more. Hi, Amber. How are you doing today? I'm good. Thank you. So I'm calling you because you're hosting a Cristobal Scarpati clinic at your facility on June 4th. Mm-hmm. Tell me a little bit about Cristobal and why you wanted to invite him to your ranch. I've done this with Cristobal a few times now, and I think my favorite part about it is not only watching him with the horses because he speaks so fluidly with them and it's really just a a beautiful dance. Not only is it like wonderful to watch, I think the conversations surrounding it are very inspirational. So as we like learn about the horse and the horse's needs, their boundaries and how we meet those while honoring our own needs and boundaries. It, it goes beyond horsemanship and our relationship with our horses, but it is also about like, you know, relationships with your family and your friends and your coworkers and your spouse. So it becomes a very just motivational, spiritual day in general, I think. Sounds like a very holistic approach to horsemanship. Yes, it is. A lot of it's done at Liberty and you know, you just really get to learn a lot about what the horse needs at the moment and learning not to like push them too hard. And, and he's just, he's great to watch. Have you hosted a clinic from him before? This would be, I think it's my fourth one. Wow. It sounds like it's going to be an intimate clinic. You're going to limit the mm-hmm. number of participants. Tell us a little bit about the mechanics of if someone's interested in participating. So we have a limit of five participants, so it's very small. There'll be more private sessions between Crystal Ball, the horse, and the owner mm-hmm. with our, the spectators there. You know, no pressure. They're going to be watching. You're welcome to participate, of course, with your horse, and that's encouraged. In the past, other people really just prefer watching him work the horse, you know, and get some good feedback and direction after. Mm-hmm. If you'd like to sign up, he's looking for horses that are green, that have had some training. You know, we're not looking for, like, completely wild Mustangs or anything. But that maybe, you know, just you guys have hit a roadblock or maybe there's a little bit of fear issues for horse or rider. Maybe there's a little hurdle with your relationship that you're trying to get over that uh, he can hopefully find the holes and help you fill those. And then if people want to find out more from you personally, uh, where shall we send them? Our ranch is called The Wild Hope, and we're located in Tatchby, California, in the Cummings Valley area. You can Google me very easily. My phone number is listed, our address, all our info, our website's there. So you can certainly go to the website and email or text would really be best if you want to come. And my phone number, like I said, is just Google the Wild Hope and for Tatchby, California. And it is 250 to enter your horse for the private session. For the spectators to come, it's $60. There is an Eventbrite link on our Facebook page that you can follow to purchase tickets. You can also pay at the door via cash, Venmo, or your credit card. Lunch is being provided by Jake's Steakhouse, and that's included in the cost. So I ask if you are planning to have lunch and stay for the full day, you arrive by 1030. So I have a head count, and I can make sure that we are accommodating any um, special dietary needs. They'll be providing just a little bag lunch with a sandwich, like a cookie and you know, maybe like a macaroni salad or something. They do this for us every time and it's always a really good lunch. Awesome. So you get to watch horsemanship and have lunch too. Yeah. And we'll have we'll have some chairs and benches set up and some shaders, depending on how many how much turnout we have 
I do encourage people to bring a folding chair and if you want to bring an umbrella because we're a new ranch. Our trees are young. Well, we hope you have a successful clinic. We're going to play the interview I did with Cristobal in just a few minutes. So thank you for joining. I hope you have a great clinic. Oh, thank you. I'll have my interview with Cristobal Scarpati in just a moment. But first, here's a message from Echo Gold Saddle Pads. Your saddle pad is the connection between you, your saddle, and your horse, and impacts the quality of your ride. Echo Gold Western Saddle Pads are 100% North American made with your horse's comfort in mind. Whether you're executing a high-impact maneuver or navigating tough terrain, Echo Gold's complete line of Western saddle pads can help solve saddle fit issues, reduce a horse's back discomfort, and allow free shoulder movement for peak performance. If you experience saddle slipping or ride a barrel-bodied horse, the Western Secure Pad offers a contoured shape and non-slip fabric that keeps the pad comfortably in place. If you ride a sensitive backed horse, the Calmatec Western Saddle Pad gives maximum comfort with medical grade fleece to prevent rubbing and impact. Both pads offer two vents on the spine, feature a layer of 3D airflow spacer to improve sweat evaporation, they're shimmable for a perfect fit, and the best part of all, they come in a wide array of color choices. Most importantly, they're machine washable, which prevents the spread of skin conditions and keeps your pad looking great ride after ride. Choose your perfect Echo Gold Western pad at select retailers and at echogold.ca. Echo Gold Saddle Pads, designed to put the comfort of your horse first. I rushed to connect with Cristobal to learn about his trip and his methods. We talked over Skype from Cristobal's ranch in the province of San Luis, Argentina. Good morning, Cristobal. How are you this morning? Good morning, John. I am fine. Very happy to have this conversation with you. It has been a while. I think we last met in 2013. You had come to the United States to a cold starting clinic in Paso Robles, and I was very new at my podcast. Yes, yes, almost nine years ago. It right. was a long time, but it's great to be to be again, to have the chance to be together again. And just to let people know, you are currently in San Luis, Argentina? It is a, a small province. We are divided in province, not in the states like you and the center of the country. It's a beautiful place, very similar to California, Central California. I've seen some of the, your videos, and it just looks like a paradise there. Yes, it is. We got together today because you're going to be coming back to the United States to display your Scarpati horsemanship. And I found it fascinating. It was one of the the great memories in, in my podcast career is that watching Oscar start the horse with no tools and walking into a cold starting situation in bare feet and just his hands, putting his hands on the horse. Can you tell me a little bit about your background with horses and how Scarpati horsemanship came to be? Yes, what you saw was my father and I starting horses in front of the people for first time in, a, in the United States. My English was so bad in that time. But in the moment that we came in to the corrals with the horses were like so, so good for us to feel like, like we feel when we are with horses. It doesn't matter where we are. So that big event in Paso Robles was a very incredible experience to us. I was very grateful because it was the first time that we visited the country to, to show our, our way to start the forces. And it was very welcome for, for you. The public was so nice and kind and very interested to know and to understand why barefoot, why without tools. I have now the chance to go again and have more time and more experience and a little bit better English to connect with you and explain what is what is the sense of every 
move and act that we do. That way, we try to keep the simplicity of the nature and do not put so much things in the field so the horse can connect with us. Of course, later we will use halter, ropes, whatever we need. But in the first moments, when we are creating the bond, creating, making the connection to get the, the confidence of the horse, is we try to show them who we are and what are we feeling. We, we can do it naked, but we, we should be the most light as we can to flow with the energy of the moment and, and try to dance that uh, beautiful, you know, dancing that we can do in the very, very first times that we are with a cult. Did your father develop this method? Did Oscar develop the Scarpati horsemanship method? Yes, yes. He took the knowledge from um, his grandfather. It's not his real genetically grandfather. We used to live a very old, ancient or old man called Don Cristobal. And my name is on honoring him. Oh, very cool. Yes, very cool. So this man explained to my father, because in that farm, there were a lot of gauchos training horses, and they were like very violent. To the view of Don Cristobal, it was very, very, very bad for horses, very bad for people, because for our culture, the native uh, culture, the horses are sacred animals, are a gift of God to us. So we should be very careful when we treat them because they come directly from God for us, to help us, to make our lives better. So that's the beliefs of our natives. We took that and my father had the chance to hear directly from Don Cristobal some concepts and some uh, beliefs that they use to train horses. So my father recreates the method as he understood it was. So we can say that he is the, the creator, but inspired by the native culture of uh, San Luis. Right. And you learn from him probably as a very young boy. <laughs> when I born, we had my father had horses in the rooms beside my room. We grow together with Capricho, his very special horse. His legendary horse was my brother, and he used to sleep in my in the next room, bathroom. Wow. Yes, it, it's a beautiful story, and I grew up doing this, but now, from the last 10 years, during I go getting old, being father, being husband, being eternal partner of my dad, I learned so much in the last 10 years about life. I put all that knowledge or all that experience in the field when we are working with horses. So and now my method is based in all this legacy that my father and the natives gave us, plus my own experience about life, about understanding, about compassion, about empathy. It's being more beautiful, at least to me and the, most of the people that know me from the behind, they can see the change and it is more beautiful because it's softer, nicer, kindly. It was fine, but now it's better. So I feel better. What do you use the horses for in Argentina? More or less the same than in the United States. is to cattle, to polo, to jump, horse jumping, ride or trails. It's more or less the same, but mostly the main port is polo mm -hmm. and criollo, criollo things, which is the same thing that you do with team working, roping. Right. There is other things called uh, paleteada, that two horses goes with the, the shoulder <laughs> holding the, the cow until some point. And now when you work with horses, do you work with the very young horses or do you work to train them for a job or do you work with problem horses that you have to solve their anxiety? Today, in my, in my present, I work with 
every horse. Every horse that is alive can ha have a chance to make an improvement in their lives. Mm -hmm. Always, always, like us. We, right. we can feel that we are fine, but we can be better, and that happens all the time. Today, if I need to, to start a horse, is, I'm so happy. If I need to start a horse with eight years old, I will do it. If I need to help a traumatized horse, uh, 13 years old, I would do it. So last time I was in, in California in 2019, we start a mare with 13 years old, a very wild Mustang. Mm -hmm. Not very, very wild, but because she was moved from two, two places. But the owner told me she's 13. And I hear three. I understood three. <laughs> So I was working and I, I saw his eye, the, the, the skin around the eye was like a old, uh, an old horse. So at the end, she told me she is 13 and I understood, but she was very, very, very good. It's because every horse doesn't matter how old they are. Of course, there is more difficulty when right. they are older. When they are, have problems for a long, long time, these problems normally are a little bit more difficult to fix. Right. But either way, they always understand in the way that I try to explain to them that everything will be fine. Because I am using more understanding than ever, and I am not being very, very complete in my explanations because I, I have no words to explain this even in Spanish but I am working hard in the energetic things about how to handle our emotions and what kind of vibrations our emotions create and what of these vibrations are good for horses and which one in, in which are not very good I will be explaining this but the way to do it is not so easy uh, talking. It's more easy when you are with a horse and you can see how they are answering to the messages that we are giving. Right. It's very special, very, very interesting. It sounds like it. It's, and it sounds like it's rather complex, but it also sounds like you are connecting with the horse on a much deeper level. That's my intention, and it's happening. In the last three years that I, I was not traveling, uh, spending so much time in my land with my horses, I was working uh, on it. I was like making a review of my whole life with horses, and I was reviewing what happened when I have accidents in the past, what happened before that, what was my energy point at that moment. I found the most of the times I was, before an accident, I got some kind of distraction or some kind of bad emotion, like angry or uh, frustration. Right. When we learn how to handle the frustration, the angry, or whatever it makes us work in negative bands, we need to make a stop, reflect about, and come back when we are ready to do it, to do it fine. It's like when you are, when you are with, a, with kids or with your grandpa, you need to be fine. You can't give them bad vibes. Right. It's interesting you say that because so often we, we do not feel that anxiety or that anger or frustration. When we go to the horse, we've been working all day, the boss yelled at us, the traffic was bad or whatever was you think you're going to the horse to get away from all that but you might be bringing all that extra baggage right into the stable with your horse and he feels that of course of course and i don't think that you are not able to use or to take the horse as a help to come out of so many things like a filter they can filter those emotions um, in your in your life so you will feel okay i will resist all the things that i don't like because at the end of the day or at the end of this week 
I will be with my horse. That's so beautiful to me that we can have the horse as a help, as a medicine. If we work a little bit more inside us to handle better all the emotions that we are living every day, the horse and, and us will, be, will have a better relationship and a better life. Right. If you have a, a, an experienced horse and you go with this horse and the horse understand, okay, there is coming my honor with treats, so much love, uh, petting, and we are going to ride, and it's fine. But you can't do this with a very new horse, with a green horse. They are more susceptible, and they need more of your best conditions, your best version, your happiest version. Mm-hmm. They, they need us. Like the teacher in the kindergarten is always smiling and playing with the kids. Do you remember that, imagine? I do, yes. But because uh, kids, little ones, need something better and, and nicer than in the real school. Because they are crossing the line be- from home and mom and dad to somewhere, different place and different people. So they need this introduction in the new world must be nice, kind. Right. Yes, if they took them right from the house and then put them to work doing math and and English and all those hard lessons, the kids would say, I don't want to do this anymore, right? Absolutely. And the same happened when, when horses go directly from the fields, from the, place, the open places to a round pen with somebody who, which is not another horse, And this person comes with so much information, so much imperative thinking, so much pressure. When you put so much of that, at the end, you will have a horse, a trained horse. The horse will answer and respond to everything you ask, but he will not be happy. And some, in some point, if we can't uh, guarantee that they will be healthy and happy, we are not able to use them or to be with them totally. We have a part of the right with them. But in the nature, if I want to belong you and I want you belong me, we need to make an effort together to like you and maybe your wife and, or your brother, your sister, whoever was with us for a long time in our life, in a, in a healthy relationships, we need to be in same levels, in the same chances to give what we we won't receive. That's fascinating. And now you're coming to the United States in June and yes. holding a, a number of different clinics. Yes, and I decided to come back because I, it was a, a long time without traveling, of course, due to the, the pandemic. Mm-hmm. This time, I don't want it to wait so much because I miss, I miss you, I miss the country, I miss the people, I miss the horses. I, I really love the country. So I said, okay, I know it's, it's a short time to arrange a tour, but I want to go. So I will send all my friends the new and I prepare a little short flyer about what we want to do because I want to share with you, my friends, these new feelings that I have to make the horsemanship easier than ever and to give more people the chance to, to know about this. So I am very respectful of the, your time and your money and your energy. At the end, I arranged this kind of, uh, como se dice in, in Spanish, as uh, informal, not very formal tour. You right. can you right. can call me. You can call me and say, Cristobal, I am with my friends. We are 10 people in the barn and we have two calls. Can you please come when you can come to do this for us? And I would say, OK, let me see. We can do it in the next week or the other week. I know in your culture it is not normal because you the American people is very organized, at least more than us in Argentina. But at the end, I feel it is 
possible. It's not the ideal, but it, what is possible today. But that's good, though. I mean, I do think there is a definite need for those informal, impromptu clinics where you get together and it's more a sharing of exper- of your experience and your knowledge and all the things that you've learned. It doesn't have to be, we start at 7 a.m., we're going to do groundwork, then we're going to do A, B, and C. You seem to go with the flow. You yeah. go where the wave and the water kind of takes you, and then you work from there. Yes, that's my style life all the time. And I feel very comfortable. I found a way to don't bother others with my style life. So I call the day a miracle with horses because in that day I can work with four, five, six horses depending on how difficult they are. But I can work normally with between four and six horses that day. And I like to call miracles with horses because the most of the times it looks like it's, like, it's something very interesting to see how they change in a few hours uh, with this kind of energy that we are passing to them. But I will be there 9 a.m. and we will finish 19 uh, p.m. You know, I, I am very respectful of that. The thing which is not very formal, it is you will not find a schedule in my website with the days exactly because I could... I, I could I couldn't because it, I have I have in not so much time. If I found somebody someday who can make it do it for me in the United States, I will be very happy because I am not a good uh, organizer, but I am very obedient when I have uh, somebody doing it for me. So I hope to offer that option in the future. But for now, if you call me or you text me or you email me, I will answer you when I can go. I will be mostly close to Paso Robles in San Luis Obispo the most of the time. So I am in the, in the middle of the, the state. So I can go to the north or to the south in the day. And I will be moving around. Mostly in California, maybe Texas, maybe Oregon. I have some invitations to other states. Excellent. And I kind of like the fact that you may be a little bit different in your approach. I think what I've seen of Scarpati horsemanship is more artistic in ways. And as an artist, sometimes you don't have all the spreadsheet with the calendar and the dates and everything specifically lit, written down. And I think I like that about your approach because your approach with horses is your approach to life. It's very free flowing. And first of all, you're coming for clinics, but what if somebody needed to have a one-on-one session with you? Will you be doing private lessons when you come? Yes, that is one of my favorite activities because I can meet deeper the person and the horse privately and that gives me more more tools to work. It's very, very interesting to be there as a, as a doctor trying to improve the relationship, the connection, the behavior of both. I like to work with horses first, but I open the door to the person to, to be open later to tell me what are your fears, your traumas, your what you like to do with your horse so I can give more tools, more ideas and show you what are my recommendations. One-on-one to me is a very powerful tool to transform a relationship on horses. Let me ask you this, Cristobal. Say there's someone listening to our conversation and they like what they hear, they like your philosophy and your approach to the horse. Why would they want to come uh, and see you in person? What do you think that person with that horse would gain from coming to one of your clinics? In, in the emotional aspect, it's a very, very beautiful day where people, even people sitting in the, 
beside the corral, feel the healing coming to them because they, they see and they feel the horse healing and it heals people as well at the same time, even when you don't want it, when you are not looking for this. It's the energy that heals everything around. I feel that. It's, it's something that normally happens here. People don't want to leave my place because they feel that here they have conditions to be happy and to uh, and they feel very light and healthy here so but i said it's not my house it's not me it's it's the whole thing right. it's the horse it's you it's me in and everything around so the atmosphere is so beautiful at the same time in the technical part you will see how to ask very gentle to the horse to do everything with respect and properly and they will give their best doing what we are doing because the way that we ask is from very down levels to up we like to find the way to make it more respectful we don't use the whip because we use the whip some horses need some horses don't need some horses are very sensitive and they just answer to the little stimulation and other horses needs more expressive expressions more energy more activity very interesting to go there attend the whole day because even when your horse is not in the in the round pen you would be learning from other people having other problems so we will be sharing openly what everything what happened there at the end, emotional aspect is very good. And the technical aspect is very good. And in the theoretical knowledge, you will see, hear, and experiment yourself some very new ideas about how to treat horses and how to find the tools to treat horses in inside you. The most of the tools that you can use with the horse are already inside your brain, your soul. So I will help you how to find it faster or easily and use it in the proper way. That sounds great. It's been very fun talking with you, Cristobal. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Yes, I want to add that after the first week that I will be in California, I will be much more fluent with my English. It is because I, in Argentina, where I am right now, I talk Spanish every day, all the time. So it's hard to to be fluent with my English. But in my experience is when I go there after a week, after three days, I feel much more better. I, I, I can talk not like an American, but much better than you are hearing right now. Your English is very good. And I've tried to learn Spanish several times in my life, and I understand exactly what you're saying. I'm hopeful about to don't confuse the people about everything that we are trying to share. It is not a normal clinic. It's not a regular demonstration. It is something more spontaneous. I like to, to think that it is more natural because it's more natural to me what I want to guarantee is that I will be there, not because I flew with the, how do you say, with the wave? Yeah, flow with the waves, yeah. <laughs> uh, I will be just, I will be working hard to show you, to give you the best that I, that I can, as, as I can. I am training for that. I am in very good physical conditions. I am training my English, my, my skills. I am trying to take with me to the United States this time something better than before. That's it's my feeling. I feel that I am very anxious to come back because I feel that in the, in the last nine years, I didn't understand totally where I was every time that I was there. I was new understanding things about energy and about things that were unknown to me and now I, I know m more about that and I feel that I can have better conversations about life, about love, about soul, about energy, about the universe. 
it's being more natural in my in my thoughts today. Very good. So you know, it's all about the journey of horsemanship to constantly be on the lookout for new methods that will help me gain a deeper understanding of horsemanship to learn how I can best be the person that the, my horse needs me to be. And I think that's what you're actually doing. Yes, I, I, I am so happy to take my family. The Most of the kids that are coming with me didn't born the first time I, I was in, Cal- in California. They changed me so much. They makes me more sensitive, more connected with horses even. This, uh, this sensation that I have, the feeling is like I never was in California. It's like my first time. I am going for first time or my new person is going for first time to go there. And I am having so much helping for some angels that I met in the past. So they are helping me to do everything. So they are making so easy to, to come back to California to me. And, and I'm so grateful. So Cristobal... If someone wants to learn more about your trip or contact you to come out to their place for a clinic or a consultation, where can we send them? Uh, I recommend to go directly to escarpatihorsemanship.com. You will find there my email, my phone number, uh, all the ways that I will have to get connected with the public. So I recommend to go there. Either way, you can find me. On Instagram, is Cristobal Escarpati or uh, Escarpati Equine Experience. You can find us in Facebook as Escarpati Horsemanship. So there is all those ways, but I recommend to go directly to Escarpati Horsemanship. Great. And I'll have all those links in the show notes so people can just click on uh, your page on wopodcast.com and they can find all the ways to contact you. Great, great. I will be very happy to receive your the contacts of, of your listeners. Well, it's been great fun talking to you, Cristobal. I love talking to people in different parts of the world. You're the first one I've talked to from Argentina, and I've talked to people in Australia and Mongolia and England and Canada. You really have broadened my experience with horses, and I appreciate you for that. Thanks for taking the time out of your day to talk to me. No, thank you, you, John. That will do it for this episode. Thanks to Amber McGee and Cristobal Scarpati for helping me put this episode together quickly. Cristobal is a kind and genuine person, and I wanted to get the word out about his upcoming travels. I encourage you to seek out one of his clinics. You'll see his unique approach to horses. I'll have all the contact info and other links in the description at wopodcast.com. As always, if you'd like to share a story or experience about your horse or suggest a guest, let's hear it. Send an email to john at wopodcast.com or connect with me on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram under the name Woe Podcast. It's always great hearing from you. Thanks again for listening and sharing the podcast with your friends and writing buddies. Until next time, for Renee, this is John Hare saying, go have some fun with your horses. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye.